Welcome to another episode of New Gameplay Today. I am Brian Shea with Game Informer, joined by Kyle Hilliard. Kyle, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. I'm excited for us to look at this thing. What is this thing? What are we looking at? Well, I'll tell you. It is Dead Cells Return to Castlevania. It is the new premium DLC for this, uh, I want to say, a classic game at this point. It's 2018 is when Dead Cells originally came out. It's one of the best roguelite titles I've ever played. I don't know about you. It, roguelite is not typically my genre, but this is one that really grabbed me in a way that other games in the genre did not grab me. It does a lot of like really awesome 2D gameplay, a really compelling um, style of, of, of like the format of it. Yeah. And it takes and a some... lot of inspiration from the Castlevania yeah. series. That is exactly that's what I was going to say. You beat me to it, which is, yeah, this is what this thing is all about. Yeah, so we got... Uh, I love I love the level name, because that doesn't happen anywhere else in Dead Cells, but that's a Symphony of the Night thing, where the level name comes in mm -hmm. like that. So good. Yeah, and so like the the Dead Cells, uh, this game has had several brand collaborations over the years. The Hollow Knight had Hyper Light Drifter, had uh, Shovel Knight, all kinds of crossover content has been added to this. This is the most substantial of all that content. It's also the biggest IP that they've gotten to this point, and it's definitely something that's very fitting given the inspiration and influence that the Castlevania franchise clearly has on this this game. Yeah, and it's like it's 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 the most relevant by like a significant margin. I mean, even the little map that you fill out is like taken straight out of Symphony of the Night, you know? Yeah, and it, it's clear that the developers know and love the Castlevania franchise to a degree that like, you know, I think the, the super fans of that that series will have because like they got all the little details with all the monsters with all the weapons there's 14 weapons from the castlevania series you can unlock there's the whip sword there's the vampire killer there's the throwing axe and holy water i unlocked the ability to to uh, find a blueprint for a bible which feels very weird all right um there's two full levels there's castle outskirts which we are looking at right now and then there's uh dracula's castle after that so those are two full-on levels and then there's also a couple of uh boss battle arenas that you can get that are new to this this uh castlevania crossover content and then there's a ton of music like you're hearing right. the the vampire killer theme right now reimagined in the the style of dead cells a lot of the like i think there's just like 51 tracks from, oh, I didn't realize it was that many. I thought it was just a, like a handful of, but yeah, fifty-one. Well, okay. it's like I think it's like fifty-one Castlevania songs, and then twelve additional Castlevania songs that were reimagined in the style of Dead Cells. So some of them are just okay, like gotcha. right. the the music from Castlevania brought straight over, and then uh, more than ten of them were reimagined as the style of Dead Cells. Which, by the way, Dead Cells has a phenomenal soundtrack. So I have loved hearing a lot of the songs that were reimagined in this style. Um, and yeah, it's a whole new storyline. You, you know, you find Richter Belmont in the prison early on, and then he's like, hey, come help me. You go and help him, and then there's like other uh, characters from the Castlevania franchise that you'll stumble upon, including, I mean... Yeah, I met, uh, I found Alucard, and then uh, Maria as well. And then we also, we you already saw, uh, I can't remember, I don't remember exactly, Shenua or Sh 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 Sean or something. She was from Order of Ecclesia on uh, DS, uh, which is like sort of a more obscure but favorite Castlevania of mine. So I was like really excited to see her because I, I like her a lot. Yeah, it's I mean, they did a really great job. The only nitpick that I can have with this in terms of like the lack of attention to detail, because they nail every single other part of it, is the fact that you can't hit the candles. <laughs> right. Yeah, you'll notice I I'm not trying to. I'm skipping them because it's like. I, that was actually like honestly like a small disappointment for me early on where I was like oh that that's like breaking the sort of the candles is such a core part of like of you know Castlevania to like get items and stuff I understand mechanically why it wouldn't have really worked in Dead Cells and like if you can break one and get nothing you would just be sort of I would have been a, I just would have had a problem and I would have had to try to break every one so I, I get it but I'm still disappointed <laughs> <laughs> they did add stairs though that you're seeing right now which it was apparently a huge ordeal like we had um, our our editor Charles Hart interviewed the development team behind this and they were like yeah we had to put stairs in because like that's such a big part of Castlevania and oh, yeah. they were like man this is th this was a, a bigger undertaking than people would have imagined. 
Uh, we do have a, a, rev or a review, an interview with the developers regarding that um, on GameInformer.com and also in our uh, our upcoming magazine. You'll be able to read a, a different portion of that interview, so look for that. But uh, yeah, this is I I'm really having a good time with this. You'll be able to read my full impressions on GameInformer.com for uh, just kind of my, my gathered thoughts of what I feel this overall expansion uh, in the coming days, but... Yeah, I, I don't know how much you're enjoying this, but I, I'm really loving, like, the nostalgia, but also just the fact that it just makes sense within this world that, like, Castlevania would be a thing, and, like, these characters are, like, wanting your help, and also you can, uh, this is the thing we haven't really touched on, but there are costumes that you can unlock. There's uh, 20 outfits featuring characters like Alucard, Richter, Simon, Maria, Trevor... And and even Dracula is one of the characters that you oh, uh, really? oh, that funny. you can get a costume for, which is really cool. Like I love like some of the costumes that they have because they range from like, all right, here's Shovel Knight's costume to uh, it's a blue and white costume uh, that you yeah have a lot of like person. template swaps and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So this is I mean this you can is also a be a snowman. Expansion. That's important. <laughs> you can be a snowman, but I've yeah. I've had a great time. This is giving me a, an excuse to jump back into Dead Cells. I've already done better in this playthrough than I did in my previous one when like the game was brand new. So like I, it's it's <laughs> right. awesome to go back and see how much Dead Cells has really expanded in the time since. Uh, I, I was playing it daily in 2018, so this is... Gosh, yeah, was it 2018? Yeah. Yeah, this has been a great excuse to get back into it. I'm loving it, and it's like, yeah, this is one of the best roguelikes or roguelites that I have ever played, for sure. Yeah, and, you know, we're, we're sort of moving past it. Like, I was just in the shop. Like, that guy's a Castlevania character. Like, it's just, like, it's just a lot of Castlevania stuff. It is, I will say, it's not... I don't know, I wasn't quite sure what to expect if it was, like, more Castlevania than Dead Cells, if, if does that make sense? Like, I wasn't sure if they would use the license to, like, take advantage of, um... Oh, here, I wanted to call this out real quick. I believe this is, like, a reference specifically to Rondo of Blood, I think? I could be wrong about that, uh, please feel free to correct me in the comments. But I know that is from a pre-Symphony of the Night... Uh, Castlevania game. There's like a, a, a crashed cart. And there's lots of stuff like that, right? There's like um, little references all over the place and that kind of thing. And it's great because uh, like, what I think we, we come at the Castlevania franchise from two different points. Like Castlevania on NES was one of my first you just, video you games. You mean you and me personally, yes, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. And you, you kind of like, and I, I enjoyed like a lot of the NES and SNES titles, but like I kind of fell off after that. And it seems like you got into the later titles. Yeah, that's, I can't, didn't, I, I Symphony of the Night was the first one I ever really got into. I think up until that point, I had, like, maybe dabbled with it here and there in NES collections and stuff like that. I'm just like, oh, this is a cool artifact. But, yeah, in terms of, like, actually really falling in love with it, here, here's some, some meat in the walls. Gotta have that. Um, yeah, it was Symphony of the Night for me. And then I'll, I really adore the, the DS games in particular. I think those are, are the best Castlevania games. Um, and they need to hurry up and release those as a collection because <laughs> uh, those are the best. But um, I, I kind of got distracted by the the horse cart. But like one thing I was, I wasn't really sure about is like is is Dead Cells going to adapt more to Castlevania or is it, is Castlevania going to adapt more to Dead Cells? And like this really is, um, this is a Dead Cells game, right? In case there was like any like confusion about that, maybe there isn't. Maybe I was just being dumb. But like this is absolutely like mechanically, structurally, a hundred percent a Dead Cells game with Castlevania sort of elements, right? And when I say elements, I mean like art elements and weapon elements and stuff like that. The core game it basically remains unchanged from what Dead Cells has always been. Yeah, and it's just the environments, the weapons, the characters, the story, that's all kind of in a Castlevania wrapping, right? Yeah. Um, and I love that you can bring the Castlevania weapons back into like your Dead Cells world because it's not like a standalone thing. Like you are intertwining it. It's all integrated, yeah. Like you, you still play the first level and then you find a set of stairs and you meet Richter and he kind of sends you on your journey. If you want to, by the way. You can just you be like, to. I'm going to go yeah. to the toxic sewers instead. Um, and you, you can absolutely do that instead, or you can find the stairs that take you to the castle outskirts, and it's very clear because it's the only stairs, as we mentioned before, in Dead Cells is, like, anything associated with Castlevania, so it's nice that there's, like, a visual indicator, like, oh, this is leading to the castle outskirts. Yeah. Uh, but it's yeah. also nice that, like, it's the way it's structured, which is so fun, of, like, 
it's such a typical Castlevania thing where it's like the first level is right outside the front of the castle and then the second level is when you actually get into the castle like right you gotta like break you gotta make your way in before you can actually explore the castle yeah it's, it's a nice touch in that way um, and I just love that you can bring the weapons out into like the dead cells world because like I, the whip sword I feel like some of these enemies just didn't know what hit them when I brought the whip sword like <laughs> right. a, a, a super powered up version of it and I was just like annihilating some of the more uh, standard enemies in that way. It was just great. Yeah, I think actually, maybe I'm trying to. I, I actually end. I I ended up pre-recording this, which I don't usually do, uh, because it is tough, and I was struggling <laughs> to play it at the same time and talk. So I recorded a good run here. But I think if I remember correctly, I think I actually get the whip sword right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because you're, you're upgrading for the blueprint. Yeah. Right. I love the Which whip is sword. like a game changer for me, Brian. Like, I, it totally, I was like, oh, this is everything, man. <laughs> this is great. Uh, yeah, and it's, uh, so this, this weapon in particular is, is new. I wasn't sure if it was a totally new weapon or what. It's from the Castlevania series. Okay, so it wasn't in Dead Cells previously. Correct. So, yeah, like, okay. you, and and it, you, you can transform yeah. it. So, like, if you pressed Y, it will make it so that it transforms to the sword form. Right now, I think it's in the whip form. Well, I had to keep it in the whip form. Like, it would be silly not to play with a whip. But you can in see that like, it game. takes Come up on. both slots in your uh, in in both your like melee attacks or your your attack buttons, your X and your Y. But like, you can choose which one you want to do, and they have different stats based on and like different abilities based on which form it's in. So it's really cool in that way. But it's also restrictive in that it takes up both your slots. Yeah, it's worth it though, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's a really like, great. Um, it, it's it's a I really mean, you'll great see, weapon. I'm like ripping through enemies with 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 the whip. It's great. Oh, there we go. I was I was sort of you're, you're testing it out. But... It's okay. I respect that. Yeah, I'm learning. There's the whip. You know? Yeah. Yeah, you got it. You even if it's like the electric whip that was previously in the game, if you come across that and you're and you're trying to play the Castlevania stuff, man, you gotta go with the whip. You just gotta. Yeah, and there is like the traditional like vampire killer whip that uh, was like you know the the whip that everybody associates with uh, Castlevania. Yeah, that's also a weapon right. in here, but um, we're we're not seeing that in this video, unfortunately. No, no, I haven't gotten that yet. Uh, but yeah, I, I is there anything else we need to say about this before we get out of here, Kyle? Uh, no, yeah, we want to just give you a brief look inside of Dracula's castle. We don't want to spoil any bosses or anything, but, um, yeah, I mean, if you like, if you like Dead Cells in Castlevania, there's really no reason not to recommend this. <laughs> right? it, it still like, feels so good. It's like peanut butter and jelly is ultimately is what it is. Um, yeah, and I'm having a blast. It's given me, like I said, that great excuse to rediscover Dead Cells after being away from it for almost five years at this point. Right, and it, just coming back to it now with all the content that has been added ever since is just—it's immense how much this game has changed. You know, there's custom games and assist mode if you have a difficult time getting to some of the later content, and then of course all the collaborations and uh, standalone expansions that they've added over the years. It's—it's yeah. it's just a great package now, and this is kind of like the cherry on top of all of it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so, Kyle, thanks for recording your gameplay and sharing your six skills with us. And uh, thank you to everybody for checking out new gameplay today. Be sure to subscribe to the Game Informer YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, we're recording new gameplay of brand new titles pretty frequently at this point. You can also follow us on Twitch and then find our two podcasts, The Game Informer Show and All Things Nintendo, on your podcast platform of choice. Until next time, thanks for checking us out, and we will see you later.